Ready. It's already alive. So we Vanessa. Hello. Jenna. Of course. Cassidy. You can take it. Paula. Paula. Cassidy. Natasha. Natasha. Alyssa. Jenny. Carmen. Hola, Carmen. And Linda. Yeah. You guys are. <laughs> we here. All right. Waiting for more folks to get in. Natasha. We're just waiting for more folks to join. We're going to be talking about like the Women's that. March on Washington. Um, I'm sure there's a I lot of questions people line. ask. Video? Feel free to. I told her not to. Do yeah. It, she didn't listen. We are got to make sure we talking to as many people as possible because there's a lot of questions out there. Um, so waiting for some more folks to join. <laughs> really excited. We just came out of a meeting with uh, our national team for the Women's March on Washington. It was fabulous. So excited to be working with all these fabulous ladies. Um, so Tamika was like, we got to get on Facebook Live because all these people answering questions about the Women's March on Washington and they're not actually talking to the organizers of the Women's March on Washington. So this is your chance, people. Um, this is your opportunity for you to answer and ask questions about the Women's March. I'm going to kick it to, I'm going to kick it to Tamika, to Tamika who's going to start <laughs> who's going to start this conversation um, about the Women's March on Washington, which is January 21st, 2017. We better see all of y'all there because it's going to be amazing. So, Tamika, can you kick it off right now, right, and talk to the people and tell them what is this Women's March on Washington and why the heck Wait, are you organizing on. this? Need, I'm, I'm going to need y'all just to scoot back a little bit. Just to um, remember, like, how you set it up when it's me mm -hmm. and my scoot back. It's just... We don't really know how to do live. That's what yeah. we're clear about. Go ahead, right Tamika. Go ahead. Hello, everyone. Hi, folks. I see people saying hi, Tamika, on here on both. We're they actually said Justice live in the house. I know we're live on hey. both. Leslie, Matt, Carleen, all kinds of folks. June Moses. So many people are joining. Um, hey, Desiree. Hey, Desiree. <laughs> what did reach out to you? She son? said, Desiree. What it is? What it is? That's right. right. That's right. So listen, here's the deal, ladies and gentlemen. We have been really trying to focus on organizing um, and really sort of pulling together the pieces of this operation for the Women's March on Washington. And over the course of the last, you know, a few days particularly, and really since the beginning of this entire effort, um, you know, there's been a lot of questions, a lot of people asking questions, a lot of people having different things to, that, to say. You can't really turn them like that because it doesn't video properly. So mm -hmm. Carmen's will be sideways, exactly. We got okay. three cameras going, so no one misses it. Mm -hmm. So nobody misses it today. Well, continue. So anyway... Um, you know, so there's been a lot of folks asking a lot of questions, um, and also there's been some stuff that has been promoted, information that's sort of been out there um, that is definitely not factual. And we've done, you, can't you know, a lot. Only her. To, it's also. okay. Mm -hmm. But you guys, like, when you're on live, you can't act like you're not on live. Like, once it's live, <laughs> yes, people live. can see everything okay. you're All saying. Right, All right, no, sorry. Going. So... Um, so basically, you know, we wanted to come directly to you because y'all know y'all folks know us, right? Like you know these three folks sitting right here. You know our work. You know what we've done. Um, many of you do. Many of you support us, and quite frankly, we do the work with you all all the time. Like um, you know, we're part of one family together, and we support one another's work. We're out there uh, with all of you who are tuning in, and we don't want people to ask questions. Um, you know, and, 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 and be wondering about our work or wondering why we are part of something or trying to understand it where we're not accessible to be able to answer the hard questions because we can talk. Like, we can talk to our family and friends and be accountable and, and deal with whatever the issues and questions are that you may have. So with that being said, the first problem um, that I want to personally deal with is this idea that it has been floating around that the three of us were brought in to work on the Women's March on Washington specifically um, 
as tokens, right? Like there were some white women that threw this march together and we were brought in as women of color who were tokens to clean up a mess that was created or whatever, that there was a mess in fact that existed. So here's the reality. We're not here to defend or anything, anybody, white women, nobody but ourselves. We, and not even so much defending ourselves, but we want people to be very clear about the facts. The night after the election, so the election we know was on Tuesday, November 8th. On Wednesday, November 9th, we want you to get this down, like write it down, <laughs> do whatever <laughs> you got to do. Because by the way, we about to stop talking about this because there's too much other work to be done to have to continue to s explain the same thing over and over and over and over again. So on... Um, on Tuesday was the election. You know, most of us went to bed Wednesday night, or Tuesday night, kind of knowing but not really sure. Wake up Wednesday, we hear that, um, in fact, you know, Donald Trump had been elected president. Um, a woman by the name of Teresa, who lives in Hawaii, sent out a Facebook invite to 40 of her friends for her friends to join her in Washington, D.C., to do a Millions Women March. Now clearly, the use of the name Millions Women's March was very, very problematic. Um, not a good name to use, not good at all. As a matter of fact, on, thir on, on Wednesday at some point, I began to see posts here and there, very small, you know, a few posts with people who were putting up Millions Women March. I didn't think much of it. We all were caught up in our own spaces, our, space. our own mm -hmm. feelings, or whatever. On Thursday, these women, three, three different women, all white women, connected with one another on a platform called Pantsuit Nation. Because so that was Thursday. So we're going to go back over the timeline so that all the folks that's trying to create their own narrative about what happened, this is the facts of what happened. On Wednesday, a woman sends out an invitation to 40 of her friends saying, we, I want you to join me in Washington for the, the Millions Women March. Mm -hmm. When she sent that information out, it made it into a group called Pantsuit Nation. And by Thursday, she connected with at least two, but there were more women who got involved and said they also wanted to be supportive of this particular effort. By Friday morning, so not after a mess, because yes, there was an issue as it relates to the name, but there was not a widespread drama occurring at the time. I'm sure there was some people who were saying, what is this name thing? Why would you guys call it the Millions Women's March? This is crazy. This is not right. What are you guys doing? But by Friday morning, folks got us on the phone asking us to be a part of the organizing for this effort and they did not ask us to come and be a part of it from a perspective of organizing a march that conversation never even came up they never got on the phone with us and said can you put the can you plan the march when they called us they said we have this thing that went viral there's almost a hundred thousand people who have signed up at this moment to come to a march we had no idea that it was going to be this and we are asking that all of you that you ladies join us to be a part of it and help center the voices of women of color and now y'all know us and the most marginalized communities now y'all know us very well and to think that somebody's going to call us up and say, we, we want y'all <laughs> to come down here and plan somebody else's march, busy as we are, all the stuff we got going on, that don't even make sense. So please don't let people tell you that foolishness. They called us up and asked us whether we would be willing to come in to help center the voices of women of color because they realized that they had, in fact, started something that they, it, was, it was bigger than what they thought it would be. And so we met, okay, so they, we met with, um, with a woman by the name of Bob Bland. And Bob um, is a woman from Brooklyn who, by the way, when we met with her on Saturday, the Saturday, um, right, after right after the election, that Saturday, when we met with her, she was about two weeks from having a baby. So that was another variable, that there was a woman who was about to have a baby who we came together with and sat down and said, let's, you know, figure out how we can work together and what is it that we need. 
Now again, y'all know us. We came through the door, like, so, and black people, and Muslim people, mm. and Mexicans being deported. Like, so what are we talking about? Like, what is this right. march going to be about? Mm. And they were very clear from the beginning, particularly Bob. And actually, I want to make sure we shout out Vanessa Rubel, because she was the one who made the call to connect us to Bob. And Bob was, you know, she wanted to make sure that whoever she was talking to was people who really know the issues, who gets the issues. Wasn't like she, you know, she could have called whoever. But they wanted to make sure that they had folks working with them who really knew the issues. And so we went, we got involved, we met with them, we talked about what issues we think are important. And, and by the time, this is another really important thing, by the time we got involved on, fr on Saturday, Friday, excuse me, on Friday, which was also Veterans Day, mm -hmm. the name had already been changed from Millions Women's March to the Women's March on Washington. So there were some people who had an issue with the fact that the name was going to be another historic um, convening that happens, um, you know, as it relates to black people and people of color in this country, particularly black people, which was the 1963 March on Washington. But what we think is really important about that and why we did not, um, we were not against the name is the fact that over in his, during, throughout history, since 1963, the name March on Washington has been used for several major marches. March on Washington has been used in, for the LGBTQ community, for uh, the Vietnam War. There's been multiple convenings in Washington under the banner of the March on Washington. And so at this point for us, women having a March on Washington sounds like something that's really important. And also, if you want to really talk about the historical reference of it all, Dr. King was not standing there with all black people. And he was one of the conveners of this occasion. Yes, it was heavily focused on, on black people and our issues in this country, but it was a diverse march where a lot of different people showed up. A lot of races were there and present for that particular day. So when we were told that the name had been changed to the Women's March on Washington. We were okay with that. We would never have been okay with the idea of the use of the Millions Women March. By the time we got involved, it had already been changed. I cannot tell you what the thoughts were or intentions or any of that of the initial person who started with Millions Women's March. I've had one conversation with her um, over Facebook. I don't even know her. Maybe her intentions were pure. I hope they are. Hope they were. But I'm not here to defend whatever she did, right, wrong, or indifferent. Once we got involved and we really accepted the reins of, you know, really being actively engaged, we sat down and helped to craft the statement that not only apologized for the use of the, the name Millions Women March, but also promotes the, the, million, the march that is coming up, the 20th anniversary of the Million, Man, the million Women March, excuse me, in 2017. So to go back over that again, once we got really engaged in everything that was happening, the first thing that we wanted was a statement to be put out that basically made it very clear that everyone involved was aware that, we, that the wrong name had in fact been used and that there is in fact a Millions Women March that already exists that is going to be held in Philadelphia, um, the 20th anniversary. And I think I missed saying that the initial Million Women March happened 20 years ago in Philadelphia where black women gathered in Philly um, for a very, very historic day. And it's a very important uh, uh, day for us. And we would never in any way allow people to co-opt that. And it was wrong. And it has, in fact, been corrected and changed. One of the things that we know that happened, which we have also talked to a lot of different people about, is the idea that when people, particularly black people, were going on the Facebook page where you had almost 300,000 people communicating, folks were being, their messages were being deleted, they were being, um, you know, they weren't being treated nicely because they were bringing a very serious grievance about the name and about the fact that this was a white woman led march and people were upset about it black women specifically and some white women and as they were presenting their issues and bringing their issues um and bringing their issues to the facebook page there were women within the states who are volunteers that do not in any way work for anybody 
on the national level, these are folks who started their Facebook pages and said, you know, we want to march. They started deleting people. So since then, we've had multiple conversations where we have asked people that if they are really trying to be a part of this march in solidarity with women of color, they should not ever erase anyone's message that is speaking about oppression, marginalization, co-opting, and all of those things. And the only time in which we feel that it's okay to block someone is, of course, if they're, you know, being abusive or harassing. overly aggressive or harass mm-hmm. harassing them. So those are some of the top line items Mm -hmm. um, that have taken place. There's been also an issue of the permit situation where um, I think it's it's really also important to note, and I know Bob, who's not here, she was here with us earlier today, would want us to say that none of the people who started this effort are organizers. They've never organized anything like this before ever. They were just women who were upset, who wanted to do something, and they put this information out into the public, and they just and they had no idea how to manage mm-hmm. something this mammoth. And so we happen to come along with the skill set to be able to do that uh, because there are a lot of black folks and Latino folks and Muslim folks who could have come, come to the table and said, I know the issues, but I've never put on a march of this large degree to this large degree. So we called Janae Ingram, who used to work with me um, at National Action Network. Um, we have a team of a bunch of folks, Natasha Williams, who you all probably know, most of you yeah, are Natasha. specifically, Natasha's here. Um, Paola Mendoza, Cassidy. I mean, the list goes on of all the folks that we called and asked to come in and be a part of this effort. Um, and since, and so the doors are open. So why am I even going through all of this? It Okay, what is the problem? Yeah, exactly. 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 That's what we say. What is the problem? <laughs> Coral Masters bearing. That's exactly right. Said, That's right. Brother said, we got your back. Right exactly. There. So what was happening here is that for a while, I don't know what was wrong with us. We were like, and my son was having a heart attack because we were like writing messages and like, halfway talking to people and he's like why y'all don't just talk directly to the people on facebook live so and tell them so this is what we're doing today so we're just you know we're all your friends we know a lot of you and we're just having this conversation because people are getting answers from people who are not directly organizing the march if you got a question about something you want to go to the people that are a part of the march right or a part of the event that you have questions about Unfortunately, the people who have been putting out a lot of commentary are not people that are involved in this march. So let's, let me tell you the uplifting part of this, because Tamika always wanted to get start with the drama and address <laughs> the drama. But we are organizing a march that is going to be po- or poised to be the largest mass mobilization that any new administration has ever seen. And the last one was around 70,000 people, and that was around Harry Truman. Sisters and brothers, also brothers are welcome. This is a march for mm-hmm. everybody, people mm-hmm. of all ages. We are working tirelessly to ensure the safety of all of our marchers, that there are amenities for everyone who is attending. So all are welcome. Your boyfriends, your husbands, your brothers, you know, our sisters, our grandmothers, your, your kids as young as you know, elementary school age, everyone's welcome to come to this march. But we're going to be really specific here that this march is led by women. The, sex, the success of this march is going to be at the hands of women. And yes, many of whom are women of color. We, are, uh, we have an entire production that will be put on where we are centering the most marginalized voices and those who have been specifically targeted by this next administration. Uh, our website is currently being updated so you could meet the very faces and the human beings who have committed themselves to organizing this march. Look, people, we all got jobs, we all got families, we all got rent to pay, and a lot of us don't even have the time to even uh, organize something of this caliber. The reason why people like us have joined is because we knew that we had not only come as individuals to the table, but we have the communities that we organize with and love to bring to the table, and that's all of you. We want to make sure Native American sisters are centered, that our Mexican and Latino and undocumented sisters are centered, that our Muslim sisters are, are centered, LGBTQI communities, our black sisters are centered. So we are reaching out and we want you to reach out to us. We're human beings and we're doing everything we get, can and putting as much effort as possible. But you got to also see us and give us the benefit of the doubt and reach out to us. And our table is open. And if you feel like we're not being inclusive, drop us a message. All of us, believe it or not, have a very easy email address to 
reach us at, which is pretty much our first name at womensmarch.com. So Tamika at womensmarch.com, Carmen at womensmarch.com, Linda at womensmarch.com. We want to make sure that this is something that our women, that women of this country are going to be so proud of, that our daughters are going to be proud of. And we're going to talk about this years to come and say the, the message that we sent to this administration is we're not backing down. We're not afraid. We have the courage to stand up for our communities, the neighborhoods we come from, the cities that we come from. And we're not afraid at all. We actually are going to project a message of courage, of bravery. Mm -hmm. We want to make sure that this administration sees that the leadership of this nation, the centered leadership of this nation, are women. Women. We've, it, it, it's always been women, but we've never gotten the credit of the leadership that we have demonstrated. And while they thought that they defeated the potential first president of the United States that could have been a woman, that, that doesn't mean that woman leadership is dead in this country. We've always been here. Our ancestors have always been leaders, and we want to demonstrate that again in the March. So we're excited. Uh, we want you to be a part of this. We want you to visit our national page. We're on, we are on uh, Twitter at Women's March. We're on Instagram at Women's March. We're at womensmarch.com. I mean, these are the people that are dedicating 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I was just actually telling Tamika. There's money over there, though. Uh-oh. Joe Taker got money. Joe Taker, girl, we're going to reach out to you because we all yes. about that. The so I, is, yes, we need money. Yes. So Linda Sarsour is um, heading fundraising. We have a big development team out here. We have a crowd rise campaign. If you know individual donors, we are so proud to announce that the Gathering for Justice, which is an organization founded by the legendary Harry Belafonte, is the presenting partner of this march, which means all donations are tax deductible that there will be a transparent process. Um, this is a, a big feat. We're talking about potentially a half a million people, if not more, um, in Washington, D.C. And I want you guys to understand that we are here because we are committed to this call. We have literally five and a half weeks to put this production on. We need as much support as possible. And I want to say this quote that I have, and I, I don't necessarily support always the woman that said it, the woman that said it, but I, I believe in this um, quote that says, um, uh, Women who don't support other women have a special place in hell. I just want to say that. Um, that when you see your sisters out here for you and out here organizing and, and, and working out, we need, we need your support. We need to be uplifting each other. If there was ever a moment that we needed to be uplifting each other, the time is now. And this is exactly what this march is going to be about. And I will say another quote that really br brings me yeah, into this. More inspiration. More inspiration. That, that was yeah, that was. Rough. I'm just saying, <laughs> I, I you got to put that out there. Because we do this to each other yeah, as women all oftentimes and that's really sad because you know for sure when if men were doing this march they'd be they'd be getting props left and right the other quote that i bring to this and how i work in the premise that i work with and why i work with carmen and why i work with tamika and other women is a quote that i have up in my office by a woman uh, aboriginal australian woman named leela watson and it says if you have come here to help me you are wasting your time but if you have come here because you believe your liberation is bound up with mine then let us work together and this is the premise that we are working together on this yeah. march whether it be latina women who are involved undocumented women muslim women white women black women all of us lgbtqi women we come here because we believe that when one community is targeted, we're all targeted. And that is the spirit of the march that we are in. So we hope that people are going to join us. This is going to be a historic moment. It's going to be the the next day after inauguration. It's in Washington, D.C., January 21st, 2017. I'm so inspired. I can't wait for my mom to come, for my daughters to come and be there and really be able to say that we, too, were a part of history. And Tamika didn't say this um, earlier, but when we talked about the name, the Women's March on Washington, it comes with great responsibility, right? right? And we know that we stand on the shoulders of giants, that we don't, we don't think that we're showing up all these years later doing anything new. We are continuing the legacy of women leadership before us, many of whom were women leaders even at the time of Dr. Martin Luther King, although he got a lot of credit for the leadership, but we know that he had and was surrounded by strong women uh, who really were doing the groundwork for all the grassroots organizing that was happening. And we also had a national call with, with Bernice King, who is Dr. Martin Luther King's daughter, who again reiterated that this march comes with responsibility, the name comes with responsibility, but that she gave us our blessings, that she hoped that we invested in understanding that we too were carrying on a legacy of many leaders who have sacrificed for us even to be in this moment, to even organize a march of this caliber. So we hope that you know you join us, um, womensmarch.com, Women's March on Twitter, follow updates. If you have questions, yeah. don't, don't, Read, you know, don't, 
Don't just go to the yeah, sources, and I'm going to pass it back on to Tamika. <laughs> okay, go no, ahead. Let me just kind of say some of the oh, logistical. Yeah. So thank you, everybody, for joining us today. It's really important that we get our voices out there and also that you share the message with your friends, with your communities. We really want you all to be a part of this historical event. I stand on the shoulders of Harry Belafonte, and so the, in the spirit of Dr. King, it's only right that we come together, and it's called Women's March on, on Washington. But I also ask you, um, so for those of you who want to figure out how to donate, go to our website, www.womensmarch.com. You could donate there. Um, you could also reach out if you want to give major donations to Linda at womensmarch.com. And if you want to partner or um, if you feel your organization is interested in getting involved, reach out to me, Carmen at womensmarch.com. And so we really welcome all of you because this is important. It's going to take all of us to ensure that we show up on January 21st because that's what radical resistance looks like. The fact that women from all walks of life, all different issues are coming together to take a stand. Um, also know that we are working on some policy priorities. So our policy team is going to be putting that together for all of you. Um, so just know that we are working every single day. We have our full-time jobs. Linda, we can't find her. She's somewhere in the world, but she's here with us tonight, so we really thank, that, thank her for being here. But just have patience with us. We're really excited about being there on the 21st and know that it takes time and commitment, and it's going to take all of you to get involved. Yeah. Sure, I'm going to let so Tamika I, wrap yeah, it up. No, I just wanted, you know, also to say that, you know, I understand, and, and we want to be really clear about the fact that we have not in any way said that we don't understand the questions and concerns that people have around the idea that you wake up one day and find out that 53% of white women who voted potentially voted for Donald Trump. There's some people who say those numbers may not be right, but at the end of the day, we know that a lot more white women than we ever thought voted for Donald Trump. And to see that now there's a march and people are feeling really, really triggered and quite frankly abused and just a lot of stuff that exists that comes up when you're when you feel that you're being led by a community that you don't feel did the work to ensure that you were protected and we understand that and have been willing to share that message we've been having those conversations we've been talking about it when people are asking us what is the problem like what's the challenge like why white women have come to us and said what's the big deal we just want to have a march we all want to be together and we have been very clear in saying that sounds like all lives matter versus black lives matter you have to be able to understand the challenges that black people in general in this country and and not just black people because my sister my mexican sister here <laughs> has been told that she will be deported and her family members will be deported under this current administration and my muslim sister was already going through hell and hot water but now there's a registry that is being recreated because it has existed in the past, but mm -hmm. it will be created with an intent to harm in this hour, which is what we believe. So as black and brown people, you if you're a white person who's trying to be in solidarity with us, then you have to be under, able to understand that your voice in this moment is a little less important mm -hmm. because you have to be prepared, if you say you're in solidarity with us, to push our voices out front allow us to lead and allow us to walk this thing to where it needs to be that means but but i i think i would have to say back to my own sisters to my black sisters who have raised the issue about this march being an effort that is is is, is white led and therefore going to be predominantly white people if we want to change that narrative we need to be present we need to show up and ensure that we are out there in numbers because what I was not going to allow to happen, and I know I speak for Janae Ingram, um, who's another black woman when I say this, I was not about to allow 300,000 white women to meet on the mall in Washington, D.C. to talk about women's issues and our issues were not at the forefront of that, number one, and number two, that somehow they believe that they're setting the agenda for all women for the next four years in this country. That was not going to happen. So that is why we are present. That's why we are in the center of this. And the last thing Linda said, I wanted to, you know, I'm talking about the negative 
components of this is because we just need to be real like every we know that a lot of people have been seeing a blog that has been floating around and then all of this negative stuff that has been said some a lot of what is in the blog that you all have seen um, by this young lady is stuff that we completely support we've said that we actually put the blog on the national Facebook page and told all the white women that are on there you need to read this you need to understand the issues and challenges here we put out a statement that talked about white privilege we've done all that and we will continue to do that what I have an issue with is when you have a problem with something you should state it and it is not an attack it is facts mm -hmm. but when you start to muddy the waters on facts and when people try to reach out to you to get the facts clarified and you don't want to talk then you would rather be attached to a lie because a lie is more attractive than having to tell the truth. Mm -hmm. And so that is when your point begins to be diminished in my book mm -hmm. because we want to be able to sit down and say, what are the issues that you feel need to be addressed in this hour? How do we make sure that it is included? And if you decide to say, listen, I don't care. I'm not marching with white women. I'm not going to Washington, D.C. with white women. That's fine. But don't say that we were bought in to clean up a mess or to be tokens because the reality is we were brought in before the big mess if you will which I don't I don't know you know if everybody has their own perspective on that really started where so many people um, started to feel really like uncomfortable with this particular March so we really wanted to come to you all directly and say y'all know us unfortunately you can't win everybody over to your cause I pretty much have had it up to here I've been on the phone explaining and explaining and explaining and explaining I'm about to start telling people, go check our Facebook Live for Monday, December 5th, if you want the information. If you're ready to partner, you're ready to make a move, you want to make sure that our voices are heard in Washington, that we are present and front and center, then that's what this conversation is about, and that's why we are here in this hour, and we hope that all of you who are listening, who have ideas, who have money, who have whatever, will get involved and, and stand with us. You know, and and I guess the last thing I will say is we walked 250 miles. Yes, we did. My knees from, <laughs> will still tell you about feet it. still hurt. <laughs> we walked 250 miles from New York City to Washington, D.C., a long trek. And I can tell you that some of these same people who had negative things to say about white women's marches had something to say when the march wasn't being led by white women and it was only the three of us who were leading it. Mm -hmm. So sometimes... The stuff that we hear is just the drama that people want to throw in the mix to distract us from being able to do what we need to do. Mm -hmm. We need to continue to stay focused, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, today, Ben Carson, Ben Carson, mm -hmm. the man who is a brain surgeon, was just appointed or going to be appointed hope he is, he got, not. He is getting he's a gonna get hug. appointed because he doesn't hug. have to be he doesn't have to be confirmed i don't i don't think we so. don't know don't but know. whatever hug. it is this man president oh donald trump elect donald trump president-elect president donald trump oh, um has said that he is going to put ben carson over hud the housing urban development for the dang on federal government, okay? The man is a brain surgeon. Yeah. So even if he had the best intentions, the sweetest heart, and the most just everything, he's a brain surgeon. He needs to be somewhere dealing with people's medical issues and not our housing issues. And then there was a statement where you see some of his past comments that were made during the time when Ben Carson was running against Donald Trump, if you will, in the, in the damn... Primaries. Um, uh, primaries, the Republican primaries, where he was basically talking about the fact that there needs to be a, we need to stop this dependency that people in urban communities have on federal projects. But yet there is nothing coming out of this first 100 days that really specifically is going to deal with the dependency, quote unquote, dependency that we have. We haven't heard anything that says that our education system is going to be turned around from the perspective that public education is going to be put first and then all of these other programs and school choice and all of that. All of these different things that we don't have time to go over today. When you start talking about threatening people's rights and then taking away their housing, like let's not be tricked into arguing with one another when we need to keep our eyes on the prize because That's they're right. moving the ball all around. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, yes, 
53% of white women may have voted for Donald Trump or did vote for Donald Trump. Of the electorate. Four, of the electorate, of those who, who, of those who voted. voted. But 47% say that they did not. And those 47%, if they want to be strong allies in this moment so that we can push back on the fact that, listen, I just had a conversation with a white mm-hmm. woman on Facebook Live, yeah, I mean, excuse me, on Facebook the other day, who said, Roe v. Wade, she's so worried about Roe v. Wade being rolled back, she can't take it. The 23rd of January, the 22nd of January, the day after the march, is the anniversary of Roe v. Wade. And we know that this administration, that is the incoming administration, has been against it and has said actually that they may, in fact, try to roll back Roe v. Wade. And she was so concerned about it. And I said to her, you know, this is when what we mean when we say centering the voices of women of color, centering the voices of black women. A white woman is going to find a way to take care of herself. A white woman is going to find a way. They will be fine. They will be protected. Black women, brown women, small, uh, young women and girls will be the ones who will be marginalized and oppressed by rolling back Roe v. Wade in numbers that it just is, is too devastating to mention. Mm-hmm. Our communities will be impacted first. So yes, it is true that white women are concerned, are worried about it. But if you really want to be true to this movement and this solidarity piece, let's be honest in saying that black women and women of color are the ones who will be hurt the most. So that's the types of, those are the conversations that we've been having. Mm-hmm. We need you all to join us to mm-hmm. have these conversations with us. And we love and support all of you. And we hope that you continue to support And us. two questions that have been coming up uh, that have been floating around on all the Facebook Lives is permitting. There is going to be a permit, people. Listen, you, <laughs> you heard it here. Documented. Archive this. Clip this part of the thing and go share with your friends. People, you don't... In Washington, D.C., they don't go around flipping out cards of permits and you just walk in and be like, let me get a permit, and then they sign a piece of paper. There is a lot of... No, they don't, actually. <laughs> There's a lot of negotiations. Like the There's a lot of uh, thinking about the location and if, if it's conducive to the amount of people that we have. There will be a permit and there will be a march on January 21st, 2017. So if that's your concern, put that to the side. We will be providing information as we get it. We are working with city agencies on the ground there as well as well as local law enforcement. Janae Ingram is our lead there on logistics. I believe in her. We've done this many times before. There was another question also about we should be talking to other people who have done these uh, mass mobilizations in the past, including folks at the Million Man March. Well, here she is right here, <laughs> Tamika Mallory, who was one of the co-chairs of the Million Man March, of the 20th anniversary of the Million Man March, which just happened on October 15th of 2015. We were all there. Uh, people know the logistics. We have been working with folks who've done this before. We know we, and we have these relationships, and that's why we hope that you understand, and many of you don't notice, that we do have these relationships. We are working with people who've done mass mobilizations on the mall or around and in and around Washington, D.C. So there will be a permit. This is an opportunity for us to stand and send a strong and clear message to this administration, a message that is led by women and women of color in these United States of America. This march is open to all people in all ages. There will be entertainment. There will be speakers. This will be an uplifting opportunity for us to uh, translate our anger in a place of productivity. And for folks talking about what about you know taking our money out and what about other tactics and strategies, we support everything. This march is not an all end and we think we're going to solve all the problems of our communities by going to a march for one day on January 21st. This is one direct action, one public demonstration of numbers out in public on the president's first day in office to let him know that we're not playing and we're here to defend and stand up for our communities. But there are people doing boycotts. There are people doing direct actions within their own cities, their own states, people working on statewide legislation or fighting against statewide legislation. And we support all of that. We support boycotting corporations. We support all the work that's being that's happening. So I don't want you to think that we have chosen this particular way to fight back as the only way. This is one way and we join we want you to join us in this one way and we hope to continue to support the work that people are doing across this country and have continued to do. So I don't know if anybody has anything else that they wanna share, but we love you. Again, if you have any questions, Carmen at womensmarch.com, Tamika with the K at womensmarch.com, Linda at womensmarch.com. We're happy to answer any questions. We have been getting requests and suggestions and people reaching out from all over the country. Believe it or not, all over the world, people who are willing to stand with us against this demagogue and his cronies in the White House. And we hope that you will be there on January 21st, 2017. Womensmarch.com, Women's, Women's March on Twitter, Women's March on Instagram. Uh, 
we hope to keep uh, in contact and we love you all. <laughs>